Welcome to another episode with Monica and Sankalp. So in today's episode, we we're going to be super excited to have our guest today because it's a very special guest. Yeah, it's a very very special. <laughs> we we special because it's we need Vincent special. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> um so it's someone who has changed what beatboxing means in India, created a space for it. Yeah, at a time when no one even knew what it meant. Absolutely, and he's not just a beatboxer, right? He has his own original music, and he's a host, an anchor, and his next goal is to have about a million copies of his music sold. So, let's see what happens in this episode. Interview yeah. with Vineet Vincent, take four hundred and fifty-four. Welcome to the podcast. We are talking to people from across the world. I currently have Sankalp and Maumi. Mount me what and we're coming to them uh, live this is a live interview so uh tell me what moves you this morning and what made you get out of bed hi kids hey we need hi can you hear us i can hear you <laughs> okay how are you doing thank you so much for joining oh my pleasure i'm doing okay ish can okay. be better can be worse i shouldn't complain i'm guessing I'm personally living in a moment right now. This moment is very special for me and I'm going to, you know, take a little bit of our time. I'm sorry, Mauni, <laughs> that uh, I never imagined that this day would, you know, ever come because when I first bumped into your uh, you know, your beatboxing journey, it was probably a decade ago, I guess, your original TEDx talk. Not to make you sound like old. <laughs> yeah, I mean, a little old, it's just a little, yeah. it's fine. No, that began, you know, lit- literally a decade ago when I first saw your videos, you know, with your, uh, you know, fellow beneath the uh, twin, uh, you know, that you guys yes. did on stage. Like, firstly, you know, talking to you on a podcast show, you know, by, you know, with my wife next to me. Uh, all these things are insane. So just wanted to take a moment to, you know, let the, you know, listeners know that if you still are looking for a sign, you know, to do something, you know, insane and, uh, you know, miracles happen. Yeah, basically. out of the ordinary, <laughs> then, you know, you know this yeah. is your sign. Um, basically, everything that I've done, I've just had weird and unrealistic expectations that when people listen to the kind of dreams and the kind of plans that I have, they mostly end up laughing at it. My latest is... Um, by the end of this year, I want to sell a million copies of my album. And the funny thing is, my album isn't even out yet. So what I've started doing is, I've started going to people and asking them to pre-order my album. Right. So, I mean, these days you get uh, music, it just streams, right? It streams on pretty much any device across the world. Um, but the difference between streaming and actually buying music is that when you stream music, the musicians barely get paid. Right. At least the ones whose music you're streaming. The big ones always get paid. Um, yeah. And back in the day when I was growing up, if I really liked a musician, uh, for example, I remember the last cassette I bought was a Shania Twain cassette, a double cassette. Um, and I thought that album was amazing. It was gorgeous. And I loved the fact that I could own a piece of an artist's music. And so I'm kind of going back to where I used to find the love of of holding and owning something that that... I respected to now trying to put my music out into the world and saying you can't touch it, you can't feel it, but but you own it. I will send you a drop link as soon as the album drops, and you can put it into your laptop, into your phone, onto a pen drive, put it into your car while you're driving, listen to my music, use it as uh, as a wake up uh, alarm sound, you know, because otherwise you have to pay for all of these things, and it's quite a bit. So yeah, yeah I've started pre-ordering the album at ninety nine rupees, and my target is to hit a million sales, like a million album sales by the end of this year. And that's a very unrealistic target. So I com- completely understand what you mean. But let's see where I, that's what I'm aiming for. Let's see where I actually land. Now, today we'll do a little uh, walk. Not a little, it's going to be a giant leap from all the oh, way. Oh, no. From all the way to the beginning of how I know you, which is TEDx. And today you are out here, you know, trying to achieve a goal of, you know, selling a million copies. So one of the biggest like beatboxing yeah. names that we know in yeah. the industry. Like how <laughs> it used to be one of the biggest beatboxing names. Now there's a gentleman named Divyansh. Mm. He's from Jaipur. Phenomenal beatboxer. Super unique. There's just like two or three other beatboxers that kind of sound like him. And I kind of like that because um, when I started beatboxing, uh, everyone started sounding like me. That kind of bothered me for a while. But after a while, it was like, eh, it's okay. But this guy, you should check him out. Divyansh uh, Kacholia. 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 Yeah, Kacholia. I messed up his last name. Iran, it's amazing. Uh, 
four four beatboxes I can think of. One is Zero. Okay. Okay. The other one is uh, uh, Tom Thumb. Do you? Tom Thumb. I think, oh, yeah. yeah, Australia. After bumping into your beatboxing episodes yeah. on TEDx, then right. you know, YouTube suggested me, you know, to look into that as well. And the third person is I don't know if you know this uh, Pakistani YouTuber who does flute and also does beatbox at the same same time. I don't remember his name right this moment. Right. Yeah, okay. and the fourth. Is uh, Mauni's uh, little brother, yeah, my brother in law, <laughs> younger brother, yeah, he does beatboxing as well. And actually, funny thing is, before this call, we had a little argument <laughs> with uh, him, uh, in regards to what is the right way to learn beatboxing, the 101 of the it, basic, the yeah, the basics basic, of it. Yeah. Is it uh, okay. bits and cuts or is it boots and cats? Because <laughs> the way he teaches me, or tries to at least, <laughs> boots and cats, and oh. uh. Yeah, here yeah. Sankalp always says no. It's bits and cuts because that's how I heard it first. Interesting. So I mean, it's basically anything. Um, <laughs> it's it's you can say bits and cuts or boots and cats or I like saying boot this cut this. Um, okay. So when you say boot this cut this, uh, you have a lot more words to play with. So the boot this cut this boot this cut this. It's a lot more simpler for people to pick up. Yeah. Now, that, now that you're doing this, can I ask you, Vineet, for a little uh, training or, you know, uh, for both of us, a little bit of beatboxing? Sure, Just... I will send you my Google Pay number. You can now uh, <laughs> send me the pay. Okay, so uh, yeah. training. Okay, so I tell you what, like the, the way I started off as a beatboxer was I took very simple words, sounds and syllables. And these are sounds we all did when we were growing up. For example, one of the sounds are... Um, you know, when you were a little kid, you used to make the... <laughs> yeah? Do you still do that by any chance? Or do you like, uh... I do other sounds, but not this one, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then we shall not go into that conversation at this point in time. This is PG-rated, kids. All right. So, um, yeah, so a sound like that. The I took a sound as simple as that, and I put a word into it. So I went, wow, right? And I, I said it twice. I went, wow, wow. And that turned out to be a beatbox sound. And then I figured ways to use that sound with the beat. So I go, wow, 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 add a little kick there. So like really simple sounds, when you start practicing them and you start really working to clean up those sounds, that's, that's the way I learned how to beatbox. What really inspired you to get into beatboxing? Because as far as I know, 10 years ago, 10 plus years ago, beatboxing wasn't even a thing then in India. It had just, you know, people hadn't even heard of it. So kind of, yeah. So I started in 2007 as a beatbox actually. And uh, so it's been a very, very, very long time. Um, what inspired me to do it? Uh, being broke. If I'm being absolutely honest with you, I needed the money and I needed to do something in order to get the money. But I was already emceeing back then. Okay. I was working mm -hmm. as a presenter, as a host and an MC for small brands and, you know, small festivals, doing shows at the mall. And the beatboxing came quite naturally because I would, I would, like how I'm, I'm playing the fool even now with you all, I'd always play the fool on the mic and I'd go super early for sound checks and I just fooled around with the mic and it started sounding like a beatbox. And at one of my gigs, I even remember this, this was at Commercial Street. There used to be a West Side there. Okay. This was 2007, December, just before, just after Christmas and before New Year. Uh, I was making these stupid noises and these beats on the mic and a guy walked up the floors and he came up to the top and he's like, was that you? And I said, yeah. Uh, he said, that was some very cool beatboxing. You should do that professionally. And I was like, hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Tell well, me more. <laughs> and I had the first mover's advantage. I was I had something very unique that other people didn't have. And I approached it like it was a business rather than just something for fun or something that I might have been good at or something I wanted to show off with. I took it very seriously like it was a business. I think I was always just really comfortable being on stage largely. Right. And I would always sing. Uh, in the school competitions, I, every single time I've gotten the first place with the school competition while I was singing and being on stage just came very naturally to me. I, True. I, I didn't have stage fright. It felt like I was just talking to you all, like how I'm talking to you all now. It's the exact same way, the exact same accent, the ex exact same hand gestures that I use on stage. And I just be me and it just fell into place. So I was always comfortable on stage. 
I guess yeah. what comes naturally to you and for someone looking at it from the outside, it looks like, oh my God, he has something unique, but that's something yeah. which is, you know, it's a flow. It's a natural thing for you. It's a flow. Yeah. School, which is why I didn't like school. School always forced me to do things excessively when I was not good at something. And when I was really good at something, they said, ah, you don't have to focus on that. Uh, that will come naturally. So study that lesser, focus on the ones you're doing badly uh, with, and then you'll do well in those subjects. So imagine if I actually focused on the subjects that I was good at. If I was, I was really good at history, I was really good at geography, I was really good with English, I was good with biology, uh, but I didn't focus on them. I was focusing on the things I was not good at. But did you always know that you wanted to do something different and unconventional and not like the, the regular mainstream um, you know, fields that kids are usually pushed into? I didn't know what I wanted to do, but I knew what I didn't want to do. And I didn't want to keep doing the things I was bad at. Yeah. So the That's things that I was good at, yeah, the things that I was good at, I felt good doing. And so even music, I felt happy when I sang. I felt happy when I first picked up a guitar and learned my first two, three chords. And right after that, I wrote my first song. Um, like the first chord I ever learned, I wrote a song with it. So these are things that made me happy and it came quite naturally to me. And this is back in 2005, I picked up the guitar for the first time and started learning how to play. So I would think, yeah, the, the simple answer was I knew what I didn't want to do. I don't know if that makes sense. Does it make sense? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. This is something we learned in the other conversations that we had with people who are, you know, very uh, dedicated and, you know, concentrated on what they're doing today by the process of elimination, right? They realized yeah. this, this is... This Many is, of the times yeah. they didn't know what they wanted to do, but yeah. they always had enough clarity to know what they did not want to do. Yeah. So that sort <laughs> yeah. of brought them, uh, you know, on the path uh, that they're on currently. But we need going back to, you know, how you all started, like in even in, I guess, even back then, money was a very important factor, you know, in, you know, surviving, yeah. right? It was, it's always been that. Today, it's even more uh, the magnitude of it. But so how do you survive through that, right? For people who are listening, how, how do you, do you tell yourself, okay, money is yeah. not important for me. It's just making me happy, you know, holding that guitar and playing that chord. How did you find that balance? Because even while I was hearing you talk about, you know, picking up the guitar for the first time, there's still that joy and, you know, love of music that you cultivated. Um, at a very young age. So how did you manage to balance that with real life, you know, real world uh, issues like yeah. money? Because yeah. it is important to sell yourself as well. If I'm being really honest with you, the journey in the last three plus years has not been easy. It's not been, uh, it's been extremely difficult, challenging, tiring, exhausting. Um, how happy I, am I these days in terms of, you know, because I've put music out into the world, I'm, I still have to put out about one, two, three, four, five more music videos have to come out into the world. I can't afford to put it out because it's so expensive. I've desperately been looking for investors. Um, it's either I sell my soul and I get an investor and basically just write off everything to that investor and I get the happiness of putting it out into the world or I put in the hard work, put in some more time and uh, figure ways around it. But it's a very unhappy journey either way. So it's just what form of unhappiness do I want to choose? And I think I've chosen the unhappiness of being a little broke at this point in time. Because if I'm being very honest with you, and this is, these are things people need to understand, to produce a music video is not easy financially, to produce it financially. Um, I, I, I was terrified to even look at the numbers after a while. So I've been self-funding myself all the, every single amount of um, like my, Everything that was in my piggy bank, I took out and I just invested back into this because I've been beatboxing and emceeing for, what, 16 years now? Mm -hmm. It's amazing. I have an amazing job. I really appreciate it. I really appreciate the fact that I've been able to do this for money. Can you imagine like stepping on stage, entertaining people, making people laugh, making people go, wow, that's a good job to have and I've made money out of it. But it's never... I've never gone back home and thought, wow, I've made a difference in someone's life or I've made... Um, a positive impact in the world but with my music I feel that every single time I perform a song uh, somebody listens to the lyrics they come back they have a conversation with me we talk about it they tell me their story I tell them my story and I think both of us move away as better people from that conversation and now it's happening on a larger scale when, I, when I'm putting my actual music out into the world and people are watching the videos and people are seeing you know, the kind of lyrics that I've put out. And they are 
they're moved by it and they want to have conversations with me about it. They tell me about the crappy stuff that's happened in their lives. And, and there's a sense of fulfillment that I feel at the end of the day. And right. which is why I, I, I know that, that this is the, the direction I need to head down. And mm -hmm. if not now, then when? Because, you know, I could be dead <laughs> any day. So I might as well do it now. It is difficult to find a common point where you are satisfied with what you're doing and also the people who are watching you do what you do are also happy at the same time, right? See, what fulfills another person does not necessarily fulfill me, even though I am the, the giver of that fulfillment. I don't love beatboxing. I don't right. love MC, but I, I love music. Music moves me. Music right. speaks to me. I, it, music makes me happy, makes me sad, makes me go through a very number of emotions. It makes me feel alive. It makes me feel right. human. And I think that's what's important because as a beatboxer, like you just said, charisma, right? Life isn't only about the wow moments. And that's what beatboxing is. It's just all wow moments. There are no depressive moments. There are no sad moments. My job is just to come, entertain, make you go, oh my God, that was amazing and leave. Leaving people on a high. But as a musician, as an artist, as a poet, you talk to the human emotions that are so varied that yep. sometimes we just forget that it's important for us to go through these emotions and that's something i really want to do and that's something i think i'm capable of doing so which is why i, mean, I did it uh, um, a song of four minutes is nothing less than a feature film in my opinion because it takes you through that many emotions in in, yeah. in such a little amount of time yeah. right when people don't realize yeah. Uh, that sometimes there's, you know, months, uh, probably even years of hard work behind yeah. just those four minutes that someone yeah. listens to on a bus ride. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it makes all the difference. Um, yeah. what, ab Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Go on. what about the re staying relevant, Vineet? Like, it makes you happy, you know, to put out a certain kind of lyric in a certain kind yeah. of word in a song. But, right. you know, some people come and suggest, you know, you can't put that because that won't, you know, reach a lot of people. And then you need to reach to millions of people and make that money. How do you? Do, how, how, do you how important is that? Yeah. In making your art. How is uh, how important is it? Yeah. Maybe by the second album or the third album, I would focus on that. But for now, I'm doing this for me. So okay. people have told me this and that, and um, I have cut off a couple of things here and there. But as soon as I feel like I'm being forced to do it or it's coming unnaturally to me, I immediately revert back to the original plan because. Um, the music that I'm putting out now, I wrote when I was a kid. So the first song I told you I wrote when. I first picked up a guitar and I learned my first chord, first two chords technically. And I wrote the first song and I still don't have the guts to put it out into the world because it's, it's extremely deep, it's extremely emotional, it's painful, it's very real. And it's written by a kid who just looked at the world in a very black and white sort of a way. Right. Um, just right and wrong, no ifs and buts and maybes. So. I sort of want to do justice to that kid who, who wrote these lyrics and wrote these songs. And so I'm still struggling with a lot. And I think I'm not very equipped to answer that question in terms of the balance. But as of now, personally, I'm just trying to be as authentic to that kid as possible. So even though it's not very current, even though it's not very cool, even though it's not very, I keep get like a lot of people call me a boomer constantly. And so uh, it's true. I get called a boomer a lot. And uh, but if I'm authentic to that kid that wrote that song, I think I will be a happy person once this album comes out. I think you always make sure that the backbone of whatever you put out is authentic. Whatever the extensions of it are like, you know, the video that you look at, you know, the people that are in the video and all of that can be something that is not something you want. But, you know, the heart of it is something you always look at, right? You know, that should be something that you like and you love to do. So, yeah. yeah. I think a majority of that is what you do and that you know that yeah, keeps you yeah. <laughs> yeah but we need we talked a lot about beat, beatboxing this there are so many titles uh that are associated to you right if there's like a One moment moron. that's a title <laughs> i'm very proud of you get called a moron a lot and i quite like it i think that, i'm a moron that makes you unique and being a moron <laughs> stands you, you out get a t-shirt with the name you i'm with moron and just point straight at me like that and i walk around <laughs> with that t-shirt I've, I had to make a list and I put it out in front of me because there's so many titles okay. are to you, right? Like, a, like, how do we introduce yeah, this guest? Yeah, a motivational like, you know, speaker, the, a yeah. beatboxer, <laughs> a host, MC, musician, singer, and an entertainer, a performer. 
you know uh, and uh, and uh, you know uh, an announcer an ass? you got to say an ass i will take an ass in an announcer ass. Uh, uh, <laughs> how how do you you know define your own self how, how do you introduce yourself maybe when you like you know walk into a room and you have to like tell someone what you do yeah how do you do that i say hello my name is vinith vincent i used to make stupid noises for a living okay. i used to beatbox i still make stupid noises for a living i'd like to yeah. change that sometime soon i'm also a little bit of an mc i'm a host a presenter and yeah i'm as of now trying to be a musician oh, no. everyone's verified these days it's it's not a big deal at all like every second person who does nothing on the planet is verified so it's i don't take these things uh, as a wow thing anymore like verification badges are the new tedx stocks everyone has one so what, what yeah. is your uh, definition of you know the wow thing or like what, what would million, make you feel like i made it yeah except, except for albums. Albums. well uh, apart from a million albums i think it would be to be able to go on tour to be able to sell out venues some day i'd like to sell out stadiums uh and yeah travel the world as a musician uh i think yeah not be broke that's a very important part of it not being broke is extremely important because yeah being able to travel the world as a musician and not be broke is my answer please lock it right got it yeah <laughs> Yeah, we you gave us a little one on one of beatboxing. So for the listeners, if you are you know listening to it and if you're learning, you can you know look in the description for the GPA number for Vineet, and you can <laughs> once once you're done learning, you can send the send in the money. <laughs> I actually have free tutorials on my YouTube channel. It's called Beatboxing for Babies, and I have another one called Beatboxing for Bosses. This is on my Vineet Vincent official channel. I think I have about thirty five videos where it teaches you how to beatbox and like the basics of beatboxing and the more complex parts of beatboxing. And I had a lot of fun shooting it with some very cool beatboxers from Bangalore. So you should check that out. That's also quite cool. We'll get back to you after a quick word from our sponsors. <laughs> okay, so if you're enjoying the episode so far, please because please Because we definitely are enjoying yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> please make sure to follow the podcast uh, on Spotify and Apple Music, any other streaming platforms that you can find it on. But if you're on YouTube and watching us right now, be sure to take a moment and subscribe, like, comment and do share it with as many people as you can. Let's right. go. So I had a question for you um about your creative process. I'm not going to ask you exactly what it is because I know that it's such a personal thing for um artists. Oh, I was going to give you a very questionable answer. Okay, but please go on. <laughs> you, can, you can still do no, that. No, so but... do you just go for a walk and then you you know you find inspirations for your music and stuff or and also how difficult is it to not sound very similar to another song that is already out there? How difficult is that? Yeah. I have to completely disconnect from people from the world. I have to sort of go into a little bit for cocoon. This is my cocoon by the way. I call it the bat cave because uh, <laughs> it's so dark when I turn off all the lights and it gets very very quiet because it's completely soundproof. So every time I need to sort of go back into that zone of creating something that I'm proud of, I find the need to disconnect from everything that is mainstream. Uh what I also do is I go sit in coffee shops i drink cups of coffee by myself um go to another place i sit in another place i order a nice meal i sit and have a nice meal by myself and it sort of gives me perspective and it changes the way i look at things my question was going to be more about the aftermath like when you perform or you know when you um release a piece of music or especially original music out into the world do you ever feel you know like you've given a piece of yourself mm-hmm. away and then that's does that ever sort of drain you like after a performance or a release so i'm terrified when i put my music out into the world i'm i'm literally terrified i i can't speak sometimes i uh, regress into <laughs> questionable states and um it feels good to put it out into the world but at the same time i am because of how authentic it is to my existence and my journey i'm terrified as to what other people will think about it and i constantly remind myself that it shouldn't matter but it's easier said than done so there's a lot of fear that goes into putting these things out into the world because like you said it, it it's a part of my existence it's a part of my soul and given how deep um 
my connection is with these songs because I wrote them when I was a kid. I, my last song was written in 2009 and that was the first song I launched. It's called Color. Um, it's on my YouTube channel. So that song was the most difficult thing to put out into the world because of how how me that song was. Mm -hmm. And so even now when I get into the studio to do my vocals or to do my guitar takes, I constantly feel like I'm not good enough. I constantly feel like I'm not going to do justice to how beautiful the song can actually be. But then I realized that as a artist or as a creator, my job is to do the best that I can and put it out into, into the world as authentically as I can, I can be. Um, and then it's left up to the rest of the world to take that authenticity and make something else out of it. So there's this question of, you know, I like this question, but someone said, uh, who bakes for the baker, right? So for you, like when you, when you're, uh, when you want to take a moment for yourself and get away from all this, uh, uh, systematic chaos, I guess, uh, what do you do? You said you go into the wilderness, but for us, yeah. we have your music, you know, <laughs> to get that little, you know, freedom and, you know, break away from the regular nine to five jobs. What do you do? Right. So when it comes to music specifically, uh, I've reached that stage where it started feeling like work. Every time I listen to music, it feels like I'm working because I'm constantly processing it. Uh, can you see that? Like there are a bunch of records to, to yeah. that corner. The vinyl there. records? Yeah. So a bunch of records there. You have a player as yeah, well. The, I do have the player. You can see them even there. Yeah, oh, yeah. Right there, yeah. <laughs> I've also sort of taken a break from that for a while because even that is sort of getting a little overwhelming after a particular point in time because I'm no more listening to be entertained. I'm listening to process. And that's, like I said, it's feeling like work. In fact, I've stopped listening to music in my car altogether. I can't listen to music in my car anymore um, because it's a very intensive process of trying to create this music. It's just, it's too overwhelming. Asking for opportunities, but unfortunately this hasn't worked too well in the last three something years for me because I've desperately been trying to raise funding to finish the album and to also right. put out the remaining music videos out into the world because only then will I be able to start touring as a musician and make money. But but even given that I've been in the industry for so long and I've done a, some very cool things, it's still extremely difficult for me to just close one single sponsor for one music video. So it's still not easy. And I, I had to finance my second music video and my third music video. Um, so yeah, it's... I think asking, but again, asking hasn't been working for me as of now. I was watching an Instagram reel the other day about how you have to start surrounding yourself by people who reflect the kind of goals and reflect the kind of person that you are. Uh, the way successful people always hang out with other successful people. Um, they are, they go to, they go golfing with them. They go bowling with them. They go for dinners together. And they work together also. So I think the people that you surround yourself with is extremely important. But that's that's getting all the more difficult these days. I'm guessing as we get older, um, people get married, people move away to different countries, and then they have <laughs> babies. And it's it's quite difficult to hang out with people because, you know, they're, they want to hang out with the people that are in their class at this point in time. Yeah. I truly believe in that because I love this sentence which says you become the average of five people that you hang around the most time with. And that's been true to my life situations as well, you know, and that it reflected in the work that I eventually, you know, put out there, you know. So, but yeah, it all, thinking about, you know, having those connections and you you took the time to establish them and now that you have them, that doesn't really mean it's going to help you, right? You yeah, still have to get out there. Yeah. yeah. Brand, it's not a small number. Yeah. It's difficult, but uh, there's no other, you don't know any other way. This is the only thing. There is no other way at this point in time. So I just have to keep moving forward. So there's no other way. What do you breathe in, right? This is what keeps you going. I, I really want to know what your most memorable um, experience was while performing or anything related to your art. 
you're you're like top you know the moment that I think sort it's of keeps unfair, you going unfair to ask top one. <laughs> top three maybe someone you met you know someone you looked up to or an event or a performance yeah, or something that inspires you yeah. or, you know on the worst days you sort of look yeah. back to that memory and that's what makes you feel like no vinny that have to you know you have to keep going and um do justice to yourself like what is that there must be one come on <laughs> <laughs> I tell you the best gigs I've had was me just playing the guitar in the corner of a restaurant and barely anyone paying attention to me because I could go completely inward and just be myself yeah. and perform for myself and at the end of the song I would just I would play the last chord I would strum it and just let it ring out for a while and then I would just smile to myself because that would feel really good um those as you were asking me those questions those were the shows that kept popping up into my head the ones where people are just doing their you know they're having their conversations my music isn't loud enough to bother them it's not quite enough for you not to be able to hear it mm. and i absolutely loved that um, those emotions i think covid was that massive turning point for me where i could take all the resources and all the contacts that i'd made to actually put it to some valid use uh to be able to find people beds to be able to find people oxygen tanks blood um get them from one place to another a friend of mine from delhi was helping kids with uh getting access to phones because everything moved online right so and kids who can't afford phones or a laptop were basically left behind they couldn't attend school or college and so he went into that entire mode of my objective is to get every kid a phone so that they can attend class mm-hmm. and so i helped him out in a tiny little way I think those were the most fulfilling bits and pieces of my career so far and I felt useful I felt of some use because you know you sometimes uh, doing a show beatboxing on stage or emceeing a gig is pretty much like just going to work for me though I can just wake up wash my face brush my teeth head out do a show and I'll feel like I'm just going to work um the clients on the other end will be freaking out they'll be like oh my god this is not done that is not done this oh my god what will he say what will he do but i just hold the the pieces of paper in my hand and i look at what this should be done and it, it flows for me right. for them yeah. it's not a flow yeah. but for me it is so it's not very challenging i'll be honest with you it's it's just another day at the office so largely i've done about 1800 plus gigs and it's between 2006 to let's say 2013 and i can remember like top 10 gigs of my career but yeah, <laughs> yeah. i think looking back into the past is not something i'd like to do i want to just be really really hopeful of the future and things that lie ahead of me because Absolutely. yeah i've i've done a lot in the past but i don't want to constantly keep living off those moments because it's right. i've been there i've done that it's been beautiful and i want to go on to the next thing now so now it feels like i'm coming back full circle to the music where i just love playing music and it made sense to me yeah i mean more than 15 years of doing this and tomorrow will be another day for you to start all the way from Correct. scratch yes <laughs> thanks yes. for reminding me <laughs> <laughs> but uh, um, this has been incredible it's been a wonderful interview and what thank you very much what lovely energy you bring um despite it being like 11 pm and you have yeah. such a long day we truly appreciate oh, your time hey, thank you for thank you for making this happen though it means a lot thank you <laughs> thank you for your time and this has been beautiful we'll keep all the links for all of your stuff it's so your channel and yeah, <laughs> yeah two um, channel and the qr code so they can buy, pre-order the album which is called <laughs> growing up and then some and my youtube channel is called vinitwits in music and my instagram <laughs> channel is called vinitwits in official <laughs> no there's so many things so instagram profile a couple of youtube channels yeah. you did a lot yeah. of i've uh, bike uh, episodes you know with talking to people and their journey yeah yeah tutorials of beatboxing and you know and... you have people rooting for you yeah. here and um, we're gonna hit that you know a million um, yeah. yeah we're gonna hit that million sale and even more. More. yes and even more <laughs> and even more i love yeah. that beautiful if you could give a quick shout out to my brother i know it will make his sure <laughs> you know ah! <laughs> does that work my name is tarun so tarun <laughs> hi tarun my name is vinith vincent and i am supposed to give you a shout out cuz <laughs> your sister here called you a big fan i don't know why she would call you an object like that and that would <laughs> make one of your size i think that's not a right thing to do 
if you're a little fan, a medium-sized fan, or a large fan, it should not matter, Tarun. As long as you are an electrical object that rotates oh and cools God. people down. So, yep. yeah, keep cooling people down and keep your chin up because life like, is not nice like all you, the time. Yeah, like you, his character is electrifying, so I'll put it like that. Oh! <laughs> but we need... Nice. It was difficult maybe for us and for you to put it out in about two hours of this conversation, your journey of more than 15 years, but you've done it beautifully. So thank you so much for this amazing time. You made made a huge difference in my life and, you know, together today, conversation, you know, thank you for making this uh, dream come true, right? So thank you for your time. Yeah. Stay happy. Uh, continue doing what you are, and you know, take your breaks. Yeah. But and we uh, wish you yeah. the very best. Yeah, we will make sure to support you in your, you know, you right. know. You know your Thank you. Music. Thank you very much. I would say uh, you can name your firstborn child after me, but I don't think that's, you know, I think Vineet is not a very wow name. Mm. <laughs> yeah.